the process of thermal regeneration. The process of thermal regeneration. Yeah, when you talk about thermal regeneration, what comes into your mind? Thermal means heat. Temperature. Thermometer. Whenever you talk about thermal, we have to talk about heat. Temperature. Regeneration is, is control. Basically, is you are controlling the heat, the amount of heat in the body. So when you talk about thermal regeneration, is controlling the amount of the heat in the body. Remember that we are endotherms. We're supposed to keep our internal environment constant. That's why thermal regeneration is also an example of homeostasis. It's supposed to be kept constant. Above it is problem. Below it is problem. Meaning that we're supposed to regenerate at 35.5 degrees Celsius. This is 5.8. Ne? Yeah. 35.5 degrees Celsius. Yes. At least there. 35 to 30. Yeah. Did I say 35? 37. 37.5 degrees Celsius. So above that, yes, above, not, not 30, 35, ne? 37. I was, talking, I was talking about the temperature at which sperms are being produced. Anyway, it's 37.5 degrees Celsius. So above it is problem. Below it is what? A problem. Meaning that when it's above it, it will be denaturation of enzymes. And then, you want to work. You want to have hormones. You want to have enzymes. Because all those things are protein in nature. Anything which is protein in nature will be denatured. And then below it, it will become inactive. Inactive. Meaning that you will be slow. It will be dormant. Yes. Like the same way some creatures are dormant in winter. Because the temperatures are low. What happens when it's too hot? You go to the houses also. Meaning that too much of the temperature is bad. Too low of temperature is bad. Anything which is too much is always bad. Anyway, let's go back to what brought us here. So, we're saying that thermal regeneration is the process that allows your body to maintain its core internal temperature. All thermal regeneration mechanisms are designated or designed to return your body temperature to a steady one. So the body temperature is regulated by hypothalamus in the brain. Meaning that the hypothalamus is supposed to communicate to the blood vessels and the sweat gland. Meaning that during this process, we're going to talk about of more of hypothalamus, the sweat gland, and the blood vessels of the skin. So once you know that, that's when you talk about the, uh, the, the, the thermal regeneration, you must know that that's what you are supposed to talk about. Please don't forget this because this is your future. Okay, before you go there, you need to know something very small. If I bring a diagram for you, can you identify for me the following? Number one, the things which you need to know is sweat. Gland, sweat. Duct, sweat. Or sweat. Hmm? Yes. Sweat gland, sweat duct, sweat pore, sweat. Then the blood capillaries. So when you talk about sweat gland, yes, when you talk about sweat gland, we talk about this. Sweat gland. Yes. Uh huh. This is the sweat gland we are talking about. Sweat gland. Sweat duct, a tube which transports the sweat. Sweat in that. Sweat in that. Is that. Is this one. And then 
sweat pour is the hole where sweat moves out. This where you see your, your, your liquid when you are too vigorous with an activity. Then the liquid which comes out. So you have to know how to label it. Then number two, you need to know the bloody capillaries. The bloody capillaries. This is a hair follicle. So the bloody capillaries, you must know them, how they, they work. Yes. So now let's come here. So this is the bloody capillaries and this is the sweat I was talking about. It's a sweat gland, sweat duct. It's a sweat duct. Then this is a sweat, sweat, sweat pore. And then this is sweat. So you need to know that. And then these are the bloody uh, uh, vessels, bloody capillaries. So we have this shunt, this shunt. During hot day, it shrinks. Animal blood will pass through near the skin. And then during cold day, then this opens and then this shrinks. And then more blood, this becomes bigger. Let me show you. It becomes bigger, you see. And then this one it shrinks. And then more blood will be passing down the skin. And that's why during hot day, you cannot see, mm -mm, during cold day, you cannot see blood vessels on your skin easily. You can see but you cannot see them easily the way how it is hot. Yes. So now what happens um, during this thermal regulation? What happens? Let's link now. Let's link to the question. And. All right, let's go back to the question and then we see um, what happens on hot day. So now we, 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 we have to discuss about how do we bring questions concerning about this. Yes, anyway, let's go. The first statement you need to talk about is the hypothalamus because it is the hypothalamus which detects the change in the temperature. Don't forget that we say that the function of hypothalamus, when you go back here, to this, the hypothalamus, yes, uh, we say that is responsible for uh, the hormone it produces is 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 ADH. But here we say that uh, yes, we talked about it when you are talking about the hormones mm, down here. On this booklet, let me show you. Just, 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 just to remind you something small. Just to remind you something small here, guys. Make sure that you have this distinction material so that you can. Yes, hypothalamus. Where are you? Say, I'm here. Okay, he's here. All right. Control center for hunger, thirsty, sleep, body temperature. That's why you talk about hypothalamus, because hypothalamus is responsible for body temperature and emotions are you always happy sad bipolar meaning that now you're happy next time you are sad what controls that is hypothalamus anyway this is not today's subtopic today's subtopic is just to know what why do we talk about a hypothalamus because we said here hypothalamus is a center for temperature now let's go back to our description. Yes. So now when you're saying that hypothalamus is stimulated. Now I think you know the reason why it's, it's stimulated during hot day. When you talk about hot day, hypothalamus is stimulated. When it is stimulated, what happens next? Yes, it, it sends the impulse to the blood vessels. Meaning that these blood vessels, this hypothalamus is going to send the impulse to these blood vessels. What will happen to the blood vessels? The blood vessels will dilate. They will become big. The blood vessels of the skin, meaning that they will become more wider. This is called vasodilation. Guys, listen carefully. 
you're saying that hypothalamus is stimulated and sends the impulse to the blood vessels. That's the mark. The blood vessels will become, will dilate. That's the mark. This is called vasodilation. Is another mark. So, so, so don't, don't write, the blood vessels will become dilated and you skip. You go to more blood, you float near the skin. No, this is called vasodilation. We give you a tick for that. This is called vasodilation. More blood flows to the skin, meaning that we will experience more blood flowing near the skin. Yes. And then more heart. Yes. Here, you have more heat is being lost from the skin. If more blood is flowing near the skin, meaning that you're going to have a lot of heat being lost. That's why you see these arrows there. Why? Because this, this blood is hot. So if it's hot, meaning that more, 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 more blood is going to be what? It's going to be lost. More blood is going to be what? It's going to be lost. And then... If more blood is being lost, what happens? It means that, so sorry, more heat is going to be lost. What happens? Meaning that uh, it's going to make the, the, the blood to be cooled a bit. But it does not stop there. More blood is sent to the sweat gland, meaning that now this blood is going to go to the sweat gland. More blood is going to be sent to the sweat gland. Now, the moment more blood is sent to the sweat gland, what happens when you put too much food in the mouth? You just stop chewing or you increase the rate at which you are chewing? You increase. So if more blood is sent to the sweat gland, it means that the sweat gland will become more active. Ne? The sweat gland is going to become more active. And once it becomes more active, it means that more sweat now will build. You understand? And then now you'll see your skin like this. Meaning that more sweat is being produced, is being released. So the sweat gland will become more active, meaning that it, 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 it's going to produce more sweat. More sweat is being released. And once it releases, it's being released, it means that now, as it's being released, it, evaporation is going to take place. And evaporation to take place, you require heat to evaporate this water. And as evaporation is taking place, it leads the skin to be curled. It leads to the cooling of the body. So evaporation of the sweat cools the skin. That's the meaning. Yes, that's the meaning. So that evaporation uh, leads to the cooling of the skin. Sebastian, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, actually, you are more brilliant. The one who is listening. Yeah. Than, than me who is talking. Because when you are taking the information into the head. Guys, let me know if you have a question. Eh? So that we sort that out. Eh? If you have any challenge, don't, don't, don't be scared to ask a question. Eh? Don't, don't, don't be scared. Ask it. We smash it. So that uh, at least... You, 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 you don't lose it. Ne? Yeah, you don't lose it. So basically, that's what happens during hot day. What happens during cold day? What happens? So the hypothalamus, because it's the same gland, is going to be stimulated. But in this case, when it's stimulated, it has to send something. The impulse sent must be just a little different. Okay, the impulse is going to be sent to the blood vessels. The blood vessels will constrict. Guys, these, those who are having the distinction material you need to rectify this. Yes. The blood vessels become wider. No. The blood vessels will become narrow or small. Yes. They'll become narrower. Yes. This is called vasoconstriction. The blood vessel of the skin will become narrow. This is called vasoconstriction. Check. Check. The upper side is narrower. The lower side is big, wider. This is a tick, a tick, a tick. Yes. Guys, did you know that it is nice 
to mark a student when you are just giving tick, 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 make the hand of the examiner just to tick. So that even if he's wrong, they just give you tick, 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 tick. Then when you become, you get wrong, 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 wrong. Ah, the examiner starts to say wrong, wrong. Even the correct one, wrong. Aibo. <laughs> Make the examiner to be impressed that eh, everything you are writing is correct. Ne? Yeah, how are you going to make the examiner? Use this distinction material. Download it, download it, guys, and get your copy. Uh, watch these videos. Can they, Duke? Yeah, you always. There is, there is no way. I remember this guy who WhatsApped me and said that, Sir, I got 12 distinctions from my class. He was a teacher. They said, This is brilliant. 12 distinctions. He had never got a distinction before. But when he started using this distinction material, ah, uh, distinctions now. Distinctions are just are just uh, flowing like water in the river. Eh? Flowing, flowing water in the river. Water in the river. Water in the river. Eh? Yeah. So make sure that uh, use this distinction material. You will have distinctions flowing like water flowing in the what? In the river. Yes. So we're saying that if this is vasoconstriction, less blood will flow near the skin. We have explained this. Less heat is gonna be lost because less blood is being uh, is, is flowing near the skin. It's like you when you are sleeping without a blanket, more heat is lost. What about when you have a blanket? Meaning that the heat will take much more time to cross this blanket to go out, meaning that. Less heat is going to be lost. Yes. So less blood is sent to the sweat gland. If less blood is sent to the sweat gland, meaning that the sweat gland is going to become less active. What happens if you put less food in the mouth? Definitely, you'll cure less. That's the same thing. Meaning that here, it's not that much. Meaning that, you see, less heat is, less sweat is being produced. Meaning that mm, you won't have that much sweat like in the winter yes less sweat is released and then less evaporation and if less evaporation is happening it means that hmm, there will be less cooling of the body then you'll be like this why do you have these goosebumps and the hair are going up anyway this hair rising is also another mechanism of keeping internal environment constant unfortunately we don't talk about it in this case but i would have explained it to you if you go to the university it explains better when you are using this erector peel muscle which contract and make this hair to stand upright yes anyway you're not talking about it. Let me not put you in the stress. Wow. Here are some of the questions. Yes, here are some of the questions which you need to answer for me. Can I give you two minutes to answer for me how to explain the negative feedback mechanism of carbon dioxide when a person is running faster? I explained it. Young said, I explained, it's a simple thing, the, 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 the way, that's why I told you that the, the, the carbon dioxide, wait, wait guys who are starting to write, the carbon dioxide is the same, is, 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 is the same, you don't need to have stress with it, that's exactly what you need to write, yes, so meaning that when the person is running faster, it means that more carbon dioxide, more and more oxygen is being used, meaning that respiration is taking place, meaning that more, 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 more carbon dioxide is being produced. Meaning if there is more carbon dioxide being produced, meaning that there, there will be more carbonic acid which is being formed and the pH of the blood will drop. You understand? And then the impulse is going to be sent to the medulla oblongata and then the breathing rate and the depth of the breathing is going to increase. You understand? And it doesn't stop there. The heart rate also increases. 
And then now more carbon dioxide is, will be sent to the lungs through the blood. And then the lungs is going to exhale this carbon dioxide from the blood. And then the level of carbon dioxide will return back to normal. And after once it returns back to normal, then the person will go back to normal in terms of the heartbeat and the breathing. Exactly. I say that negative feedback mechanism for carbon dioxide is the only mechanism where whatever case they bring it, you're going to have to write that. You understand? Yes. You're going to have to write that. And then it doesn't have the other way around, meaning that there is no way how you're going to say that, okay, yeah, the, the, the top side or the bottom side, which one am I going to choose? You only choose one, that is it. So carbon dioxide, whatever case they bring it, you write the same thing. Make sure that you memorize it and then you get it right. I think, younger Siri, I think I've tried to explain that. All right, let's go through this and then we say that. Identify the part labeled A. Where is A? A. Yes, we have said it that it is uh, uh, a sweat gland. Yes. Give the number of the diagram one, two, three. One. Oh. Give the number of diagram one, two, three. That res represent the body's response to high environmental temperatures. Here we have to look at. Uh, what do I look at if the temperature is high? If the temperature is high, yes, if the temperature is high, you need to look at the blood vessels. They must be dilated and you need to look at the sweat being produced. You can't look at the sweat gland because the sweat gland, you, you don't know whether it's more active or not active. The only thing you know that is active or not active by looking at the amount of sweat which is being produced. So, uh, on the hot day, it's going to be this and this. Because here, they check the blood vessels. These ones, they are more wider compared to this. You see, they are more wider. Check this size. They are more wider compared to this. They're saying that would the skin release more heat through radiation diagram one or diagram three? And remember, radiation is a loss of heat without contact, meaning that like the sun, the way how it brings heat to us, you, you don't touch the sun. Yes. So will the thing that um the thing that would the skin raise more heat through radiation in diagram one or three? Diagram one or three. Because this one is under uh high temperature, then it's gonna lose it uh uh, diagram three. Give number of the diagram one, two, three that represent vasoconstriction. One, two, three. Vasoconstriction is diagram one. Why? Because the blood vessels are constricted, meaning that they are small, they are narrow. They're saying that which part of the brain controls thermal regulation? Hypothalamus. We have talked about it, and then even I showed you about it. What about this question? They're saying the diagram will represent the structure of the skin. Uh huh. Structure of the skin. They are saying that if this is the structure of the skin of two people, of two people, of two people, uh, both people, sorry, of two people, both people were in the same room at the same time, but one person was exercising while another one was not exercising, meaning that he was. Sitting still. The skin surface temperature of both people was measured after 10 minutes. Okay. Which person A and B was exercising? Let's look, look at what we said. Here there is sweat and the, 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 the blood vessels here are more wider, meaning there is vasodilation. So it's this one who was exercising. Give two visible reasons, production of sweat, and then the blood vessels are more wider. Give one hormone that would have the same effect on the blood vessels that is observed in A. In A, there's vasoconstriction. You see? If there's vasoconstriction, uh, then definitely the hormone is going to be uh, adrenaline. Why? Because during emergence, we say that the blood vessels of the skin constrict. Let me show you. 
this distinction material has this answer. As I told you that there is no way where you're gonna, there is no way how you're gonna be. Ask the question and the distinction material, this book cannot answer it. Uh, so let me let me show you where it is. You go to you go to where am I here? Where am I? Yes. So it's around here. Yeah. Yes. Let me link where what is this? Okay. Okay. Now it's around here. Sympathetic and parasympathetic. Yes, check. We say that sympathetic nervous system work together with adrenaline. You see? And then what happens? Uh, during the sympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, that's, that's when adrenaline works together with the sympathetic nervous system to bring about emergence. There will be increase in the heart rate. Cool. Constriction of blood vessels in the skin vasoconstriction you see definitely this is what they are trying to say in that question Wabon. so if we go back to add that question yes if you go back to this question uh -huh. here they're saying that name one hormone that would have the same effect as blood vessels uh that is observed uh, observed uh, observable in the person one this this is vasoconstriction and so the hormone is gonna be adri no adrenaline yes after 10 minutes of uh, 10 minutes the surface skin temperature of each person was measured okay if the surface skin temperature was measured so what does it mean it means that the person a so explain why explain why the skin temperature of person a was higher than was higher after 10 minutes and the person a was the one who was exercising you see so why is eh, no 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 explain why the skin temperature of person eh, mm -mm, let's let's find out did they say person a is the one who was exercising Ah, the thing after 10 minutes of the skin surface okay the person uh, was it measured the results is here so they are saying that explain why the skin temperature of person a was higher after Where is person a we need to find out person a they're saying the diagram really represents both people okay you know it's the sizing and the Another person was sitting still. The skin surface temperature of the, okay, was measured after 10 minutes. Meaning that this one was exercising while this one was not exercising because of what we are seeing here, because of the heat. And even we, we, we said it, uh, I think somewhere here, was exercising. And we say that person B was the one who was exercising. Meaning that, Person A, his temperature was higher. Person A, temperature was higher, but this person was not exercising. While person B, the temperature, the skin temperature was lower, and this person was exercising. But this only happens after 10 minutes. What caused this? It's because of this. It's because of this. Meaning that more heat was lost to the surrounding the moment more heat was lost the surrounding was being absorbed by and then now this liquid the heat the, the, the sweat also led to the cooling and then the, the moment it it, it it cools so when, when the air blows when the air blows on this this one becomes colder you understand and then now the skin surface it becomes much more colder. It's like when, when you take a, a warm bath, yes? You go, you bath. When you bath, it is, you are warm. But when you remove out of the warm bath, yes? And then you expose your skin 
to call the air. You become more colder than before. That's exactly what happens here. That this person, because the person A was not exercising, so was not exposed to any coldness, any liquid which is going to make the skin to be more cold. But now because this one was exercising and then the sweat was there and then the sweat made the skin surface to lose the heat, then the skin surface became more colder. That's why this person is having a lesser temperature compared to this, but only at the skin. There is another question. There are so many questions, guys. Né? Yes. Here is a question. They're saying that um, they're saying that no more healthy person was placed on. Okay, if there is any question, please let me know. Yes, uh, they are saying that um, a normal healthy person was placed in a cold room after thirty minutes. The thermal image shown. Below was placed. Okay. This thermal image indicates the temperature of different parts of the body. Lighter colors of this of the scan indicates the temperature lower than the normal temperature. Oh, okay. Meaning that this is lower than this, this is lower than this. Which color, gray, black, or white, represents the body temperature? Definitely it's black. Why? Because they say these are lower than. So this is the normal body temperature. So the answer becomes black. State what would state what occurred in each of the following parts in the person's skin during the temperature regulation. Okay. Blood vessels. Um, now you need to find out, is this, was it in a hot environment or in a cold environment, cold room? Definitely, you're going to have, if this cold room, then automatically blood vessels will go constrict. Yes, this is what I'm saying. They will constrict. This is what I'm saying. Because it is on a cold day, constrict, vasoconstriction. They will become more narrower. And then, mm, sweat gland. The sweat gland will become less active. Less active. The, the sweat gland will become less active. That's how it, So it's going to become less, less active. And they're saying, name the part of the brain that is responsible for thermal regulation. Hypothalamus. We have said it several times hypothalamus yes so basically guys there are a lot of questions you can talk about but uh, I think for today should I stop here or oh, I should give you one more one more question uh, let me see it here uh, www www.thandereduke.com thandereduke thandereduke.com a, a hormone that stimulates mammary gland that's prolactin uh, no I'm just passing and then I saw something nice of what we have tried to cover okay definitely there will be a good job is a question here is there any other question Oh, what is this? Oh. Yeah, diabetes mellitus. Yeah, there's another question. Okay, now let's let's go through this and then we wind up our discussion today. And as I said that, uh, our next discussion is going to be the tropism. We're going to discuss about tropism and then we do different questions about tropism. Phototropism and geotropism, then we'll talk about those questions. Anyway, uh, let's go back to uh, the discussion today. So, uh, uh, 
Um, yes. Uh -huh. Can we continue, guys? Yes. Young sir, are you there? All right. Let's go to that question and then we see and then we see what are they talking about. The diagram below shows reabsorption of salts. Oh, and they talk about reabsorption of salts. What happens into your mind? Aldosterone. And water through tubules of nephron in the kidney. Salt and oh, this question resembles that what I talked about. That salts, remember I told you that salts and the uh, salts. You see, I said that aldosterone, uh, the, the salts and the water, they work, they work together antagonistically. Yes. So that, they're saying that the width of the arrow represents the amount of salts and water. All right. Let's start. Reabsorption of, reabsorption of uh, these, um, so, what is it? Absorption. Mm -mm, we need a key. Oh wow! In the case here, dark means salt, gray means mm, water. Meaning that this is water. This is salt. Eh? Uh -uh. This is salt. This is water. Granular filtrate. When you talk about granular filtrate, I think you know. I I, I drew the 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 the. the, the, the the nephron. You remember I drew the nephron here. This is the gemellus. The filtrate is here. What you, you know, when you are sieving, yes, the, the gemellus is, is, is like a sieve. It sieves only small particles are going through. So the liquid which goes down is what called a gemellus filtrate. So that's the meaning here. Let me close this so that. Mm -hmm. And then now reabsorption, meaning that it goes back to blood. This one goes back to blood. And then, renal, this goes back to urine. So this is urine. This goes back to blood. This is the granular filtrate. All right. Diagram two, diagram three. Anyway, maybe we shall understand it better when we ask questions. Name the hormone in the human body that is responsible for controlling the amount of water. It's ADH. ADH and then salt aldo aldo aldosterone. Name the gland that secret the hormone above. Which gland is it? Adri, adrenal, 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 adrenal gland. Yes. Adrena, Kevin. Ish, guys, my handwriting is bad. <sighs> yeah, it's too bad. Ne? Anyway, uh, adrenal gland. So when you talk about, uh, mm, yes. Yes, adrenal gland. Then, um, they're saying that which gland which diagram one two three would represent the person who had eaten salty salty chips on a hot day meaning that first of all too much sodium ions aldosterone is working too much meaning that this food this person has too much salts in the blood hot meaning that the person is sweating too much it means that you have less water too much salt meaning that uh if i have too much salt so i expect to lose 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 or uh, lost uh, uh lose much in the urine you understand so if i have too much salt it means that much salt is going to be lost in the urine and if i have Less water. This is less water because you you sweat too much, meaning that you lose a lot of water. So meaning that I have the water what I expect the water to be. I'm gonna be uh reabsorb more water and lose less water in the in the 
urine. So I, when I go to the diagram, I'm going to look for more salts lost, less reabsorbed. Let's go. More salt. We say the salt is dark. More salt lost. Hey, more salt lost is this. Less is reabsorbed. That's number one. Now, this one is more salt reabsorbed, but I've eaten salty food, so I have more salt, so I don't need to reabsorb it more. So this one becomes out. What about this? It's the same story. So this one becomes out, meaning that diagram three might be the most correct. Let's go back. And also, I need to look for more water is reabsorbed and less is lost. More water is re reabsorbed. More water is reabsorbed. Yes. More water is reabsorbed here and less. So diagram one and the diagram more water is reabsorbed. This is reabsorbed. Less is lost in the urine. Diagram three. So meaning that diagram three and diagram one, but diagram one, the salt was in a negative is a different direction so diagram one goes out and then the answer becomes diagram three hey, do you understand it do you, did you get it yes so basically that it, that's what it means uh they're saying that explain your answer using the negative explain your answer why 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 are you saying diagram three meaning here is 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 diagram three oh so they want the explanation i've been trying to do explanation i've been trying to do so meaning that because it is a hot day yes meaning that the person is losing too much uh uh too much too much water through the sweat, meaning that the person has no water. So now you're going to say that the ADH, the, the hypothalamus, is going to secrete more ADH. Basically, you're explaining this. Hypothalamus is going to secrete uh, more ADH. Yes, meaning that we have less, 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 less water in the body. You understand? Meaning that it's going to secrete more ADH. Yes, and then the ADH is going to make the nephron uh, more permeable to water, and the more water is going to be reabsorbed back to blood. Then, this one is talking about, the, the next one is about the salt, because I ate salt food, meaning that I have more salts, meaning that I'm going to have to lose more in the urine. Hence, when I go back here, I have to go back to the salts. So meaning that here, I'm going to lose more salts. The <clears throat> I have too much salts. Yes. <clears throat> so the adrenal gland is going to secrete less aldosterone. Then aldosterone is going to is going to make less reabsorption of sodium ions, and then less so sodium ions are, are going to be since they are reabsorbed, meaning that the level of sodium ions or salts is going to decrease, and then it's going to go back to normal. So basically. That's what they are looking at in that regard. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we have tried to, to uh, discuss more questions about this. Um, there are so many questions you can discuss. And the, uh, maybe I'll prepare. Let me know if you require more questions, guys. Ne? Yeah, let me know if you require more questions or if you require more class uh, regarding to only questions concerning about this, uh, this uh, negative feedback mechanism and homeostasis. If, yeah, people are there, they want more questions, then I'll make more questions. If you, you are fine, then still is fine. I will have to go to other sections as I have also come to evolution by natural selection and human evolution.